a regular feature and aspect of emotional unhealth and particularly uh, emotional disorder is fake helplessness. You see this all the time. Um, and after you see this, you might do a self-analysis or at least be mindful of the times when you're doing this yourself or somebody that you're with is doing this. Fake helplessness, uh, the way this would manifest for me is I would have my wife do everything for me. I mean, I was like a child. I would depend on her to do things like get me directions to go somewhere. I remember that I would even call her while I was driving instead of stopping and getting a map or anything like that. It, it was a fake helplessness. You see, I, I'm an adult. I could do these things for myself if I wanted to, but it's easier, ain't it? to have somebody else do it for you. So it's not helplessness, it's just a fake helplessness. It, what it really comes down to is laziness. And uh, you see this a lot in unhealthy people. They, they want other people to do things for them. Think about people who are in relationships and the wife is trying to fix the husband or the husband is trying to fix the wife. Who ends up making all of the appointments with the therapist and stuff? Who, who ends up doing the research finding the person online and then making that call. Is it the person himself or herself? It's not, is it? The other person has to do the search online, find the person to make an appointment with, make the appointment, and the husband or the wife does nothing. Why is that? Fake helplessness. It's just one of those primary features of unhealth. Adults with this fake helplessness seemingly not being able to to look up their own directions, be bothered to make a phone call to make their own appointment for their own emotional health. When a person is displaying this fake helplessness, do you think that it is beneficial for somebody else to play along with that fake helplessness by by doing things for that person? For example, do you think it's it's beneficial for the fake helpless person for you to go to the trouble to look up a therapist and make that phone call. Well, it's not really what it is. That's, that's an enabling behavior, right? Because as long as you're willing to do it for the person, they're not going to be motivated to do it for themselves. And the fact that they're not doing it for themselves, what does it really indicate? It, it indicates, right, that, that that's really not that important to them. Because you'll notice that these people who dis display this fake helplessness, the things they really want to do, they do, don't they? And sometimes those are very complicated things that they want to do. They go to a lot of trouble to do these things that they want to do. It's only the things that they w they, they're kind of uh, passive about. You know, it, it's, it might seem like a good idea to them, but it's not something that truly they want to do. If you'll remember in many episodes of the Last Symptom podcast, I talk about how people do what they want to do and how profound but simple that statement is. You think about it in the case of people who are, have this fake helplessness. The things they, they genuinely want to do, guess what? It gets done, doesn't it? So if they're not doing it, it means that they can take it or leave it, but you know, if, maybe if somebody else will do it for them, uh, they'll do it like, you know, if you'll make me an appointment with a therapist, then I'll go. No motivation to do it for themselves. Think about that in your own life. Catch yourself anytime you're waiting for somebody else to do something for you. Catch yourself and say to yourself, no, I'm going to do that because I'm responsible for myself. I can do this. I don't want to be a participant in this fake helplessness. It's, it's really kind of sad when you see adults doing this. How do I see this today? Well, this move to these new platforms. Currently, there are some people going into conniptions on Facebook because they found out that, that I'm bringing that Facebook group to an, a close and that I've moved to MeWe and the Locals platform. I've been announcing it daily, almost daily, that I'm making these changes for the past two months. Many of these folks are just finding out about it today. Well, what does that tell you? It tells you that for two months, they, they haven't been following 
the last symptom. They haven't been listening to the podcast. They haven't been reading anything that I've been writing. They've not been watching these videos. And now all of a sudden, they see the news and they're, and they're going into conniptions. If for two months I've been talking about these changes incessantly and they're only just now finding out about it, are they really going to be missing out if, uh, if I close down the Facebook group? No. They're not, they're not participating, they're not following, they're not consuming the information anyway. Then you got the people who they just cannot seem to bring themselves to download another app on their phone. Oh, the, the struggle, the, the effort that requires creating a new login on another social media account. What a burden. It's fake helplessness. If somebody else were to do it for them, they might, they might do it, but they're not going to be bothered to do it for themselves. What, that, what does that indicate? It indicates they don't value the last symptom anyway. So in which case, what are they doing for me? What benefit are they bringing to the last symptom and the last symptom work? They're not even my intended recipients, right? My, because my intended recipients are people who are not waiting for free handouts. They're doing the work themselves. They are actively interested in looking at after their own interests by taking advantage of the resources that the last symptom provides, right? Fake helplessness. Pay attention to yourself about these times when you might be uh, falling into that tendency to be waiting for somebody else to do it. Because if you can catch yourself doing that, then you can animate yourself to say, no, wait a second. I I'm going to do this for myself. It's not that hard, and I, I'm, I can make a phone call, or I can drive over to this place, or I can uh, learn this new app. But also, pay attention to yourself about when others are being fake helpless. How do you pull the rug out from underneath fake helplessness? Well, you don't enable that, right? You don't enable that. So a person who says to me, "Why, well, you know, I, what's the name of that app? I mean, where, where are you moving to? That's another thing. Getting a lot of people on uh, Facebook going, well, I don't know where you're, where you're going to. What, like, if you're leaving Facebook, where are you going? The post that they're replying to has a huge picture <laughs> detailing, in the simplest terms possible, MeWe, Locals, this is what they're for, this is where you find them, they have apps, you can download the apps, all the information they need right there. If they really want to follow the last symptom, the information's all there, isn't it? Everything they need is there. I'm not going to enable that fake helplessness by taking them by the hand like they're some little baby child and doing, here, come on, we're going to do this for you. So in your relationships, don't enable that by doing things for people when, you know, especially think about recovery, right? Recovery doesn't work unless a person is self-motivated and doing these things for himself or herself. It, it doesn't even work. Without that element of self-initiation and, you know, genuine motivation, what, what, good is anything going to do. Recovery depends entirely on self-initiation, self-motivation, self-action, enabling self-helplessness, fake helplessness, totally defeats the entire, you might as well not even be doing any of that at all. Uh, making therapy appointments for your husbands and, and wives, you know. Uh, if, if it's going to be done, they're the ones that are going to have to do it. Get in the habit of that by not enabling those sorts of, that sort of self-helplessness in even small areas. You know, like, boy, I sure would like a bowl of ice cream. Okay. You, 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 do you hear the passive-aggressive message in that? It, what, basically what the person's saying is, will you get me a, a cup of ice cream? So the person can either say that say what they really mean, will you please get me a bowl of ice cream? Or they can get up and get their own ice cream, can't they? We're trying to get out of, escape this kind of fake helplessness, this really immature, childish, helpless state, because adults aren't in that state, even if they think they are and even if they behave like they are.